So hello everyone, welcome to a new stand-up session. Uh, today is uh, submission day, so uh, how are you feeling? How how the things are going? And uh, any any blockers? Any any questions you have? Please go ahead. Let me see uh, people like um, proactively volunteering to answer or to share. Larry, go ahead. Good morning. Um, so uh, I've been, uh, I've been trying to, from yesterday, I've been trying to uh, generate prompts, and uh, I think I'm, I'm somewhere, I'm somewhere in the middle in progress, and uh, I think I've accomplished something uh, in that, in that case of generating the prompts, asking OpenAI to do that. And what I'm planning to do next is to uh, evaluate the prompts uh, to see which one is uh, better or how the response are using Ragas. Um, yeah, that's my progress. I'm, um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling better. I'm, uh, I'm good. Uh, at least I'm understanding about mostly about Ragas. I watched a video about uh, from from a long chain software engineer, and uh, the concepts were explained clearly. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Larry. That's great. Great to hear uh, that you are having like better understanding and you're feeling better about the project. Um, anyone else? Okay, good morning, everyone. So these past two days, I've been trying to understand the project. I've been also looking into RAG, the RAG components and some of the things in the challenge uh, document. I've also trying to, I've also been trying to set up my GitHub and all. And um, I was wondering if you can just give us more elaboration on the challenge document, like what's expected or the final output supposed to be like an overall uh, overview. And I'm feeling neutral until now. So that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you, Vatlam. Uh, just, um... Uh, you want to, you said you want uh, like an overall of what is required or what is like, uh, should be the final product of this? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. So um, there are like uh, three components of this project uh, that you have to create. So um, there is like the automatic prompt generation service, the automatic evaluation data generation, and the prompt testing and ranking service. So these are like, um, the, like the final product should be like, um, let's say you will have a front end where like um, I, your customers or the customers for this uh, promptly tech, can choose one of these services and like uh, and get like um, they enter whatever their uh, uh, it could be like you you predefine uh, choices that they can then or options they can choose from or like particular questions that you want them to answer and then provide these three services. Okay, so. Um, let me just stop here and tell me like what exactly oh, like which ones like maybe you don't get and you don't which one you don't you don't know how to go about to do exactly 
of these three things? Well, from the three things, I was just wondering from where I can start and how I'm going to be organizing my whole project. Okay, so I don't know if there is like um, a one uh, like uh, one way to go about it, like uh, the one particular order. Uh, you can see that like uh, at least um, there is a dependency from like uh, between three and two. Uh, like the prompt testing will require creating um, uh, a testing data set or evaluation data. So three will depend on two. So like you can start from two or you can start from one because one doesn't depend actually on two. So it's like um, there is no, like you, you just need to understand how to go about doing this. For example, generating like you already had a session about uh, generating the evaluation data. So do you, do, you, do you get how to, or like you can start by understanding, you already said that you have been trying to understand how to like create a rack pipeline and components uh, there, there, therein. So um, I like, uh, see like how, like maybe the plan here, how in task by task. So the, the having some understanding first, and then um, I know just like trying to accomplish one task would be uh, okay. So I, I'm not saying that. Maybe I'm not saying something that is very helpful. I feel here. Um, I'm just clarifying that maybe like uh, you can understand that. We can start from either. There is not uh, 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 yeah. So I'm not sure. Like, uh, like I'm, I'm like the is if my the here the question doesn't seem to be or as as far as I understand it doesn't seem to be something that um, I can give particular. Maybe you can make it more specific because uh, like. Yes, telling you to start from task two or task three is not really doesn't seem like very helpful. And um, maybe you can uh, can make it more specific. Your question. Maybe Yababal is here. Can maybe like uh, Yababal? Can you um, jump in? Yes. So the, exactly why I came in today okay. is hi guys. It's just to have like to know where we are. And I think on Monday we spoke about like if everything is clear and if there are some issues that are remaining. But uh, is there a particular question that you have, uh, Emtran? Uh, maybe like a, because Baslam was asking a question and like uh, I was struggling okay. to answer. Maybe Baslam, can you can you repeat your question? Better him. Was that Betel Elhim asking or? Yes, yeah, she was. Uh, she was asking. Okay. Betel was asking, but, but she dropped. She dropped out of the yeah. call. Uh, so can, maybe... can anyone else? Yeah, can anyone else um, rephrase her question? Okay, maybe I can rephrase it. She was asking, like, to give a, like a um, a picture of what is the final product is supposed to be to look like and where she can start from, basically uh, working. So like. Uh, there is an over a uh, big picture kind of um, she's missing some kind of big picture understanding as far as i understood but yeah yeah okay so we can wait for her until she comes in and then we i can uh, answer not only that i think one of the things that i am doing now is i'm also just going to update live some of the discussions i'm not sure if people are taking notes so on monday for example there were a number of good questions that were raised and i have addressed some of them and therefore uh, 
it would have been nice if that is shared normally you know just people can help other people by just summarizing their thoughts on slack um, i'm not sure if that is done or not but i will answer with the name's question but maybe let's go until she comes let's go to another questions and again in the spirit that you know is it is everything clear you know are you getting the hang of it by now do you have um, an, an understanding so anything that is just that helps you to move faster and better in the challenge let's talk so good morning everyone uh, I'm trying to get a hang of it. Uh, I spent most of my time understanding and building rug. And when I revisit the challenge document, I think uh, uh, the main task is the prompt generation, I think, as I understand it. Uh, the, of course, the rug is uh, essential or crucial. I I have I lack of the understanding of the, where the prompt generation gets. Uh, I I have a good understanding of what. So uh, let's say after we uh, implement or build the error system, we don't is some data, some context. So where does the prompt generation get implemented and? how it looks on overall the uh, project uh, after, uh, with the UI and stuff after that. Yeah, great. I think this is, you know, again, aligned with better than maybe that when she was asking, it's similar. So that's good in a way that I, it is okay that the LLM space is a very, you know, we haven't got trained in the university for it right in a way that we were taught exactly the opposite uh, in everything in a way that we thought okay if you want to do something you go and you know you write a code or you find something and then you know there is a, a formal language basically the formal language is just how computer programs are written um, and then you start Kind of writing, decomposing it into back end and front end, and then within that back end and front end, you would basically write certain thing for what, for example, the browser understands in the front end, or you know what the GUI, and then in the back end, you try to, of course, the API, you expose it and you provide. Now LLM disrupts that space, right? Now LLM is basically, it is, it's basically you can do most of the things by one way you basically interact with it right so it is a database in itself that means you don't need even if to just to build a, a full application you don't need even much like you don't need a backend it can be a backend you can generate also some of the content so that basically in the backend sense it would generate everything and it will return for example it will return it would act as an api and then you ask it like, okay, you know, uh, return um, a data on that in this structure, you know, or this table, and it will return. Now, where is the prompt? The prompt is just that one, the one you ask it, right? So just you use your language. Now that is a natural language. You ask it, you define what you want in a natural language, and you ask it, and it returns. It understands somehow that one, and it formats it and then returns the way that you want if it's a table that you want it gives you a table if it's an image it gives you an image right if it is i don't know anything complex it will give you anything complex so prompt means anything that you interact with the with the llm it's just that prompt okay so th th that means the one that you write so now it's the api you can call it, it it's everything right so now in the space of what you are trying to do is it is you're trying to improve people when they do that they want to get a good result right they want to get for example they want to get a data on 
let's say on the names of people who or on on let's say on the knowledge about I don't know how birds fly right so you want to get so of course normally they just would write okay you know tell me like in 100 lines or in 10 not more than 100 words tell me about how birds fly but that's probably just because the LLM almost always asks you uh, almost always gives you an answer whatever you, you write it it will generate you know it's just there's no control there's no validation it's just gives you don't know whether it is good or not you don't know if it's valid or not you don't know if it's really so the rank part it is to given that llms are trained on the past data if you are asking about a data that is now that is about your company for example it doesn't know so the rag part is to argument it so that it gets an under it gets new data data that has not been trained so again you know rag is just it's a prompt it's nothing more than a prompt it's about how you compose a prompt right so you're basically composing a prompt by fetching extracting something and then putting it in a smaller you know in, in, the, in that prompt and ask you know then combining your question with it so rag is really a prompt itself it's not you know don't call it like in a way your misunderstanding would start if you're trying to decompose what is you know rag and the prompt rag is just about writing a prompt right so let me just stop because if, uh, uh, if I speak a lot, then I might lose, um, or maybe just you might have question. So is that clear, RAG? Now, in this understanding, it's a way of composing prompt. Yes, yes, it's more clear. Uh, and if I may ask, the yeah. automat automatic uh, prompt generation, you clash on that? Yes, so, so now RAG is it's about to, you know, it's a, a helping you to compose good prompt or prompt with data. So it was prompt with relevant um, context. And the automatic one is when you do even that rag, you need, you need how, you know, how, how are you going to write the first one? Like, you know, the first one or the middle one, every interaction with LLM, it would involve just some form of, even if just you are trying to compose your prompt, you use a prompt because if you are interacting with um, the LLM, you still you whatever you call it. So you you only can call it the desti the destination or the goal the prompts that's the goal the prompts that is helping you to re to arrive to a goal. So it's just the difference is in that it's like you know you label your your prompts according to you have a goal to achieve. And to achieve that goal, you need a prompt. So that let's call it, you know, the desired uh, prompt. But to get to the desired prompt, you need other prompts to get there. So one of so the desired prompt is what you're trying to generate. Like a person has a desire, and they need a prompt. And now you have to generate in between to get to your desired you know to provide this person to a desired prompt you have to generate now where do you start you start from the person's desire that itself is a prompt but for the sake of not overloading the word let's use it the the goal the, you know the person's intent intention but normally if that if that person just puts that one into sense to the LLM that is called prompt right so the like, prompt is whatever is sent to the LLM it's just a prompt so it's just any text right but for clarity for ourselves we just say there is a desired goal and for that desired goal we need a prompt and to arrive to there we ask the intent of a person and then from that intent of the person we try to create many alternatives of you know prompts that could be that are candidate prompts let's call them candidate prompts now these are the candidate prompts what we were, were calling the automatic generation so you generate some candidates and based on some metric you select from them the basically the desired prompt right so now just that picture let me again pause there is that clear yes it's more clear now 
Okay. Is there anything that is not clear? And maybe even not only the Masjid, but anyone else. Yeah, one dera. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Good morning. My question is, uh, in the challenge document, uh, the first task is, uh, it talks about uh, automating the what? Uh, let me read from here. It says, uh, yeah, like uh, to automatically what? Automatic prompt generation. Like, how do we carry that out? Is it, yeah. is, how do we do that? How does that work? Yeah. Okay. So the first task, um, so basically means, the yeah ta the task number is two but yes like the, the first one is review so i even put now the one that was recommended actually by abdulham um i think is that was that um I, if, um yeah abu Bakr, i think I, I might be mistaken but it's abu Bakr if i'm not mistaken fabric so in fabric for example when i browsed it i if it's not, if I am assigning a wrong credit, please just correct me. But it's just, um, I thought it is him. And there, for example, when I was browsing it, I saw a very good, yeah, it's like, it's a good resource. It's a good resource for another element. So it's trying, it does many things, but the most important part is patterns. In the patterns directory, um, so I'm just gonna maybe share again, or uh, like, let me just share the whole window. So can you see my screen? Uh, I can't see, so if someone can say if they... Yes, yes, we can see, see it. Okay. Yeah, we can see it, we can see it. Okay, so in, so in this fabric in that reference that, that was shared before last on Monday, I think, so there is this, the fabric that I attached here just as a note, um, and that one would give would would send you to the fabric um, part. You know what it's doing is something else. It's like it does many things, but the most important data that I found there is patterns. So patterns means this person actually really stored so many um, prompts, good prompts that are shared by the community over over time, and it's a lot. You know, as you can see, there are so many for different elements. So, for example, in the analyze answers, so it has system prompt and the readme. But so this is basically, so this is the readme most likely. So um, if you look at the system prompt, this is just what a prompt is. It's written in in a, in a markdown format. But you are so in this case, it's it's analyzing answers. You are a PhD expert on the subject defined in the input section provided. Goal is this, steps is this. And you know, it defines what needs to be and also um, some formalisms that, that are defined. That means like these are variables, right? And this is it, right? So now this is one, when if you are, if you want to analyze something, you can use, so this is basically a general uh, prompt because it doesn't define anything it just says you are this you need to evaluate the correctness of the answer and take a deep breath and consider how to accomplish so these are called strategies normally when people explored they have seen it this is called, for example chain of thought uh, this one is a role modeling you know there are many that people discovered llms do well if you talk to them like a children or an expert or with a role with you know, telling them, reminding them, things like that. So it's written with those strategies. So this is what, for example, if we just now say, instead of generating a prompt, it means selecting a prompt. Like, let's translate that, this statement from generating a prompt, automatic generating, automatically selecting from a database. They're the same, right? So, you know, like, you are generating like for a particular problem, a prompt. And so if you have a template, lots of templates of prompts, you can translate that statement to say, okay, select a prompt, right? Because you, all you need ultimately is a, a suitable uh, prompt. 
So this one, you can use it, for example, just as like, you know, one data for what your question. Okay, translate the problem into this. Put all of this in a vector database and, and then select one that's suitable for when the user has like what they want, you know, the goal, what they want to do. Based on that, select the right prompt. That's it. That, that, that basically means you generated now. So now generation is really means find a prompt that you can use, a good prompt. And now that you have a, a database of prompts, that basically means now select that uh, generation becomes selection. Again, let me stop there and if that is clear. Is that clear, uh, Wandera? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's clear. Uh, uh, can, I, uh, can I ask another question? Yeah. So uh, for the basis of the project, are we going to, like the, the UI, is it, yeah. it, are we going to like, uh, are we going to allow the user, like let me say, input a, input a document into the system and then they prompt, they, they ask questions based off the document they put or we're going to store multiple, yes. like yes. we're going to store, let me say, let me say one PDF into the database, and then we're going to use that specific yeah. PDF yeah. to, let's say, carry out prompts like yeah. for the user on the on the yeah. user end. Is, is, is it that, or yes. we yes. can allow the user to, let me say, like insert a, I, insert I a I document and I then, yes. yeah, yeah. So the so there are, I think you're, I think it's, it's an equal. So okay, now there is an equal. So the one part is exactly what you're saying that you could do it that way you ask the user if they have a data that they want to ask for you know and they just upload that data you store it and then they ask they, they get you they give you intention i want to do this um and then you basically create a candidate prompt or they say like okay here are my prompts can you rank it for me or the other way is that can you generate from this document like for me to evaluate data you know but to you know uh, evaluation data set so they can select that i think that's that's for the context of this week that's probably simple and better another one you can assume they you are building it for a company inside the company uh, that means you 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 make your product a white label product Where white label means like you have developed a full system and you white label it so that they or they already installed it in their system. Now, if they install it in the system, that your system could require a knowledge base. So your knowledge base, like when you did Redash, for example, that's the way the one I'm thinking. You can connect multiple knowledge bases. That means multiple databases, vector databases. So in this case, let's imagine that all of the data is connected or uploaded already in a way via its um, vector database and it's connected, just like Redash that they have connected as a company has connected their knowledge base. So that means they select the database, right? So that's the, sec the second formalism. But whichever you do, the easiest, what, whatever makes it easier for you, it's fine. Yeah? Okay, clear? thank you. Yeah. Clear? Yes, yeah. that's clear. Yeah. Okay, then any other question that is not clear? And yeah, so as I said, it's useful, like these questions I'm sure are helping a lot of other people. So, and people who haven't asked, so today, like the, the people, uh, Ma, Ma Buma and uh, Henok, I'm not sure if I heard recently from you, uh, Adisu and then uh, Niamusi, Gilbert, I want to hear from you as well. Just like you must have a question. Now it's a, an enforced one or a question or a comment. So you should not. Um, yeah. So today you should you should say something and then Melaku as well. So, OK, uh, Sheila. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Morning. Yes. Um, sorry, I was having network issues. I've been able to join now. Um, I wanted to ask a question um, because now, okay, there's uh, okay. I had not, I wasn't able to 
um, find like understand how I was going to create a database to be able to get my to get my prompts from. So what I did was um, I used the resource base as um, as I used ChatGPT as the resource base. So I wanted to ask, um, is that possible? Is that uh, yeah? But then, but that, you know that, that that is circular. You're trying to like ChatGPT can generate, but but what you're trying to do is to evaluate it, right? So that means it's either like if you are selecting a database like so chat gpt can generate for you prompts that you can use in some context but that needs to be evaluated right because that's not val validated like so if you are using a database it's a different thing if you are using template that means you said i have verified them in some way in this case the verification would be that people have used it and they find a good answer so you see, like that, that, that you cannot, you must have a way of validating. If you are generating it, you can, you can use ChatGPT to generate for you. That's the first, the intention of the project was, of course, to use like LLM to generate for you prompt and then based on a metric, um, kind of score them, rank them and find a good one. So if you are using, if you're going the, the generation way, then that means you need to generate also a data set and then rank them to find a good candidate. If you say like, okay, I'm gonna use like a database of prompts, then you can say like, okay, because these prompts for those problems that they are specified, they solve, they are verified so I can use them. So you see, just the distinction is one needs verification and the other one you assume it's verified but from consistency perspective it should be of course in principle even when you add that uh, to your database you know some of these things you know you should validate them um, in principle is that is that clear um just a little bit it's clear some part but the part where you're saying if i use um chat gpt to generate the prompts I can like I have to evaluate them. Is there is there a way I can do that? Like yeah. is there a way yeah. I can do by, that by doing this, this. Yeah. by doing the second one, by doing the second task, by generating data first that you know the answer for, and then the, the prompt is designed to get that answer, and then you compare how much the prompt gives you a close an answer that's close. Now in a semantic space when we say close it's very you know it's a very, a slightly complex so that's why you, you use ragas for that ragas is a formalism okay. in the package so it's okay. it's that it's circular that's why it's very interrelated to okay. select yeah you to you can generate a prompt so uh, based on earlier uh, terminology you know you have the user intent you have you generate candidate prompts and then you have a desired prompt. A desired prompt is just a prompt now to be sent together with some data to the LLM, right? So now it's still about generation of LLM uh, prompt. And so you ask the intent of the person and whatever other metadata that you collect. And then you ask the LLM in your, in your strategy, you ask the LLM to generate candidate prompts for that. And then you use some validation data to select one, you know, by ranking and all that, you select one. And then you provide the user that one. Okay, here is the prompt you could use, and this would give you an answer, you know, I don't know, 90% of the time gives you an accurate answer. And then the user then takes that prompt and then uses that prompt as part of their formalism. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. sorry, the last question. Um, since like different models usually and translate um, prompts differently, does it like, for example, promptly has like a, a a place where you can choose the model you'd want your prompt to be curated for? 
does it mean we are also supposed to like make it for different models or we can just do like for this project at the moment we can just do for maybe one like chat gpt okay so i think my internet seems to go up and okay so my internet seems to go up and down let me change can you hear me yes okay so is it clear okay so if it's clear then let me not change so that was the question i think was also asked on by japes if i'm not mistaken uh on monday you know do we change like do we um use a different prompts for different LLMs like Gemini and uh, OpenAI or others. I, I said, I don't know the answer for, and it's good to check if you get a good result. So now, how do you check it would be by, I mean, we only provide, I think, the keys for OpenAI, but you can use, you can test it quickly by just using the, you know, Google Gemini um, uh, open, at least their chat version. I think it's still called BART, the BART version, and then see if it if it if you get the same similar results. But yeah, it's a good question that I don't know the answer for. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So maybe Tina, tell me you want to add something? No, I uh, I actually want to ask a question that I think kind of relate to this um it's like to me okay. it's not very clear what is the difference between evaluating a prompt and evaluating the llm itself it seems like we are using or from what i read so far it seems like we're um it could be that uh, the same kind of evaluation is used to evaluate either the prompt or the of the llm and how, how can we differentiate between which like what is the performance yeah. is it coming from the prompt or from the llm itself yeah, so, so I think it it's a very good question, and it's it's very much all the time you're gonna deal with this problem, right? But so the the one part is, so if you have a data, and you can tweak the the way that you are generating your prompt, and you get a result that is better then that's you are it's on your prompt strategy so of course you are testing um you know when we say taste usually from end to end right from what we send to what we get whatever system is involved just like any other integration test you know you are testing it so let me including the power of the llm for example if you are using a very small model it's a llama 2 the results you get are of course very very dependent also on the llm but then you can almost always factor out that one by saying by using a relative metric so that means you know okay i'm not competing each of the llms based on um based on like the absolute value but based on the relatively how accurate they give me like for example from one prompt to the other you know so that basically means like i am taking a relative percentage so a prompt that gives me good in that LLM will be considered 100%. So if you, by just changing your metric, you can do that. You can remove the common denominator, which is the LLM itself. Okay, so uh, just to see if I understand um, your, ans your, your answer, is it like it, it's what, what we are varying, basically, if we keep the LLM constant, we're using the same yes. LLM, and changing our prompt, then like the relative improvement we get is come is, is going away it's going from the prompt okay exactly yeah. if we use the so, same prompt and like uh changing the llm then that's that's that's, that's LA, LA, coming LA, from the LLM. Exactly. okay exactly yeah yeah so it's like what is the common denominator really is what is yeah what is changing so 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 that that question then is clear so it's like if you are trying to compare among prompts then you are testing the basically the the strings or weakness of the prompt. And if you are using the same, for example, you have now a good prompt that is given that works well uh, in OpenAI and you go and you use it, then in that case, you are saying like whether there's a difference or not. And now not only that, you have, let's say, 100 candidates of prompts and you use 
each of them, like for you have a score in OpenAI and you have a score uh, for each of them in, um, in, let's say in Gemini. And by taking the relative, this cross, cross LLM scores, then you can measure with, you can test your question, Shayla, whether LLMs, you know, prompts are the same for LLMs, prompt structures are the same for LLMs or not. No, um, it is, but in the longer term, I think Japanese, I think it's a good uh, other question, but it's the structure in the relative sense, it's still within itself. For example, a good problem to almost always, it's a pro in a probabilistic sense, would give you a good result, right? So, so each prompt, for example, to evaluate, to get 50 or 100 um, data points, right? That you use it against, and then, that's how you get your score. So we're we're talking in the whole thing as prob basically probabilistic. So it's a statistical test we are performing. Um. So, yeah, okay. Um, and I think there was a disu. So like, and and the people you know, Mahubab and uh, and others like that I spoke, including Henok, Johannes. The people that I haven't heard recently, Malaku and Mr. and Gilbert, uh, Niamusi and Yarus, I think I want I would I would expect you to ask at least you know some of you just you should be able to ask to add this. Yeah, go on. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yes. Yesterday, my hear. understanding was. Okay, uh, my understanding was uh, we have to make it generate, uh, I think, uh, maybe at least 10 prompts, uh, questions. Uh, but now on the task two, I think uh, it says we have to use other prompts. So are we going to make it gener generate different types of uh, prompts or we are going to take just uh, prompts? Okay, so maybe just let me change if it is from me. Breaking. So just give me thirty seconds. I'm going to change the network and uh, Okay, um, I am back. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so go on at this now. Uh, my, uh, first, my understanding was uh, we yeah. have to make it, uh, generate prompts first, then rank them, the prompts. Uh, but now when I see the task two, are we going to take uh, just prompts? Uh, so we don't have to generate, uh, we have to not, uh, we don't have to make it generate again. Yeah, so, you know, the, I think the one part is that there is cyclic nature in the tasks themselves. It is not, it's not like sequential, or you prompt, you generate a prompt, then you rank them, and, but to generate, you know, to rank them, you need, um, you need to generate first um, data, right, just the one that you use for, so that means general evaluation data set. And even generating evaluation data sets, of course, you know, you need to use a uh, prompt. But in that case, let's imagine you use like handcrafted, um, handcrafted prompt that you say like, okay, this is good, you know, and then you generate data and then you check the data maybe manually. So you then, you know, that you have from that manual, you know, evaluation data sets now you uh, you you write another prompt it's called a meta prompt that generates other prompts given a certain uh, desire of a user and then for that that you get a candidate prompt from the llm and then you test each of them using your data your like the evaluation data you check them against the 
the evaluation data set and you get a score. Now, once you get a score, of course, then you have um, this, the ranking and then you get your best candidate. So that's the flow. But I think, yes, your question, I'm going a long way to answer it. But one other way is instead of that, you can use already generated um, templates of database of prompts and instead of generation, now you can make it selection, right? So yes, so you could, in one other way, you could just try to say, you know, instead of generate, select prompts, because these prompts are already used in different scenarios and they, you know, they, they are kind of validated per se. So you can, yes, it's like to simplify the process so that it can get accelerated, you can really just go and, you, you know, download all of them, put them in your, uh, you know, vector database. And every time a person, you know, has an intention for that intention, you select a couple of candidates um, uh, prompts and then you test them on your data sets. And that means you still need to rank them maybe accordingly and then you, you give them. But the generation part, you can replace it by selection. Okay, so does that answer? Does that is that clear? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, clear. Thank you. Good. Okay, so we had some hands, but I would want yeah, Abu Bakr. Okay, so my question, uh, I I I actually got the question now, but uh, why do you say uh, we can select from the prompts that we have? So. Is there any way how we can select the prompts? Yeah, like, so no that's one, one of the, the part that I gave you. I didn't want to overload you, that's why I didn't mention, but semantic routes. So semantic routes are like another strategy. It's basically, you know, based on, again, you know, if you have if you have looked last week, a lot more of the, the part is called embedding, right? So you embed, so, or before in anything, if anyone worked on NLP, embedding is BART and others were really just about embedding, semantic embedding, right? So that means um, you're trying to compare two things. It, normally it was words, that two words, for example, to know like uh, in, in a, you, try, you convert words into mathematical vectors. And that means in a mathematical vector sense, you can say king minus, um, you know, um, queen, you can do some arithmetic like the usual examples are this uh king plus uh, or minus man becomes something like, you know so you, you, these semantic spaces understand what it means the relationship between different words in a mathematical sense and you can do some calculus so normally the usual way of selection and then the cheaper way of selection is by it's sentence embedders like there are so like ll like open ai for example has uh, like the, the small i think they have the embedding uh, api so you can embed them all of these prompts because every time you put it into um, a vector database basically you are embedding them so that means you are embedding certain part of that that uh, component and therefore now you have a vector that vector uh, you can use it again and again for comparison. So semantic routes. So normally, if you have now a whole um, intention that you accepted from a user, you can just say like, okay, you can embed that one, that intention, and you can say which from the list of candidate, you know, um, from the list of um, from the list of uh, prompts, which one is closer. So that means now you are talking because vector to vector, so you, you find the closest vector. So that means the candidate prompts in this case becomes the, the ones that are returned from your vector database um, based on the user intent. But so this is normally that's done, but the problem about just the, the general way of doing it is that, for example, I think I am, I'm gonna, it's easier. So, the prompts themselves, agility story. So like if you look at these patterns, so there's analyze answers, analyze claims, analyze debate. Now this analyze answers does inside it, of course has analyze answers. So if you are said, but if someone says like, can you help me to analyze, um, you know, my, my email response. 
uh, to a client. Now, which one are you going to use? Like, you know, vector wise, which one is going to be similar? Is this an analyze, answer claims, or analyze debate, incident, logs? You know, what, what is going to be the closest one? So you don't know. So semantic rounds clearly wrap this thing around. And it's really once you use them and once you get, I mean, you may not understand them just only on this project. But the more you use them, you start really seeing the, the beauty of it. It's just a, a small strategy around it. What you are trying to say is that are, like, there, is a, there is in my database, there is a big text. But for that text to be selected, I'm going to be giving it certain type of indicators, like tags. I'm going to tag it. And then I'm going to generate on vectors around these tags. So in the next time that something like this is seen, instead of the prompt itself, like the actual data itself, but I'm going to select based on you know tag to tag. So I'm going to, for example, from the user intent, I'm going to really, I'm going to ask only the user to, to provide intent in a, in a tag sense, like in just a couple of lines of sentence only. And then I'm going to compare it. So this is called semantic route. So this is an easier way to select from vector database using again the same vector similarity so i i attach them there because yeah so if you understand them use them and it's a very clever way of selection does that is that um is that clear great okay the enoch okay uh so my question is so from my understanding uh we we generate prompts which are questions right and we test them uh to see uh, we evaluate them to see uh whether they give us a good answer or not right that's yeah the main point that's, so yes okay but so the, okay. The, the the part i mean it's fine i think your that is clear but the more you make it question or something, you're going to lose over time. In a way, prompts are anything. Like, prompts are anything that's just a chunk of text that is sent to LLM. And based on that, LLM does something. And uh, the more generic you understand it, it's easier. But for your current understanding, it's fine. It's sufficient. It's, you can think of it as a question. But okay. it is a very diverse thing, prompts are just means okay. anything that's sent to LLA. Okay, so like, I mean, the the, um, the purpose of this project is to see like which type of uh, prompts are good, right? Like it's the way we use them? I, I, again, like, again, this is much more of a, a quick generalization. The purpose is not which type. Of course, it involves which type. Which type works well, but the purpose of these weeks is not. The purpose is to be a good prompt writer um, based on the knowledge exactly which types are good. You will t you will use that one as, as an input. You know, if you are building a car, the tire is one component. That's a relevant component. But the ultimate goal is not that. The ultimate goal is, you know, to use many components, including what makes a good prompt, that part, plus automation and, and then validation. And then finally provide a user with a prompt that works for their problem. And precision means that it is uncertainty known. Okay. Is that, is that okay, clear? So, so it's like, you, you are not wrong, but that is not the only objective. So that's a okay. component. Of Maybe uh, okay. so I understood a part of it, and I have this question. I'm not sure how to uh, say it, but like when we generate the uh, prompts, like on this specific part, and uh, we evaluate them, like how how do we know that uh, the answers are right? Like, are we supposed yeah. to ask the yeah, question yeah. about something that we know? You no. Know, so that's the point. So you are generating evaluation data you know instead of also generating you could ask the company for example to give you uh, from the previous for example let's imagine you are 
companies about customer relation. Now, if you had already people asking and then the customer relation people answering, so those are, for example, one data that you can use, that's the past data. If not, so that's one, for example, this is not automatic generation of evaluation data, but you use existing uh, and actual data. But in the, in the actual, like an automatic generation, what you're trying to do is that you provide everything, the document to the, the LLM, and you ask it, your prompt is saying, okay, from this synthesize question and answer. So that means it's not generating anything. It's just saying, you know, it knows, it, it is generating question and ans answering itself from that document. So you assume then that that part is correct. Right, so the type of questions, it's like the same as teacher and the student, right? So the teacher would give like, you know, would, would have like the book tells it, okay, here is a paragraph. And then the, like the user, like the teacher then during exam would take from that, like from what he told to the students, you know, synthesize some questions from that. So in a way, even if it's another teacher who's synthesizing, because the document is there, they know, like, you know, they don't have to know about that particular subject. They say, okay, you know, I'm going to say, uh, you know, what does, like, if it's a history lesson, you know, what does, what happened, you know, when was the war, something happened? And you know, the year is specified there as well. So the answer is that, that one. So this is a multi, maybe a multiple question, but others could be a completion, uh, you know, dash for, um, kind of fill the, fill the dash or like that. So the LLM, you, it's, you are asking it to generate it has both the answer and the, 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 you know, the document that contains both the answer and the question. And then it's giving you generating evaluation data sets. So that means it gives you the answer and it gives you the question. So now answering question in this case can be anything like, you know, fill the thing, do that, or for example, uh, yeah, if you, if you ask it to make it more complex and hard, it will generate some complex and hard. And so you can take that one to be safe. It's okay. The evaluation data set is fine in that sense okay so so the, the llm has both the question and the answer and it also evaluates the answer like it checks whether so it's right or not your prompt can ask it to ensure that is the case because the pro it's everything you describe in the prompt so you're basically sending a telegram like or a message to the llm saying do this do that do that so in that you can just say it, yeah, make sure. And then you can, for your own manually, you can verify that's the case. So just a subset okay. of them, you can ver verify. Okay, so, then, yeah. So like, uh, so like the manual verification part, like, is that like, uh, like how, how do we trust the LLM to evaluate itself? Like if we don't do it we, manually? We don't trust. Or we don't trust that's why in an actual sense you know we're trusting our prompt so in principle what you are trying to do is to even evaluate your own first prompt right so because you, your first assumption is the llm will do well if i give it the right prompt so even just generating a data is a prompt so then you can say did i write a really a good prompt for the LLM to always provide a very good answer. So you are actually, by manual verification, you are actually manually validating your your first, your prompt that generates data, evaluation data. Okay, so it would be like a, a better, uh, a better way to do it. Like if you know uh, the, the data, for example, like uh, if I use a book I've read, uh, and I, I, you know, I can know what if the answer is correct or not. Yeah. So it is exactly. But it's also you have to know. It, at some point, you have to do something manual thing, right? So that then you trust. It's like it's last time I said it, it's building. It's bootstrapping. So you're using the LLM for everything, and of course, the LLM is just yeah. Like there is only a certain level of degree of trust you have. And you know the LLM really does so many funny other things. So you are building just like 
you know you're building anything in a bootstrapping sense you first build a layer so maybe the data the data the evaluation data sets you create manually your you know your prompts and then once you are happy with your prompt to generate data from a certain for example last time it was asked it's very different if you use data on scientific things versus artistic things for artistic things there might be you know it's not it's not easy but for scientific things more factual things it's probably easy so maybe just your prompts the, the one you trust is only valid for let's say factual things right so then you build okay that's your constraint you know your system is validated only for factual things and then you just say like okay so i will use this the one that i verified from to generate um evaluation data sets and then after that i accept i ask the user you know the user then gives me intention and then i have another prompt that takes that intention and uh my the you know some of the prompts that i've already validated and then generates a candidate prompt and then okay from those candidate prompts uh, then I select, I, I evaluate them against the one the validation data set, and then I score them, and then I rank them, and then I select one that works best. Is that? Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So I think that you know you have to now after all of this conversation you have to know that's why your model of what a prompt is really is gonna either confuse you or make it very easy. Everything you interact with LLM in part is just a prompt. So it is like it's it's that that is what is confusing you. And it's okay, get the hang of it. And it's not that difficult actually. It's just that the wording is very, very complex here. Like because we just say, okay, you know, here is prompt. The the goal you're trying to do, you know, to generate is a prompt but then you use another prompt to generate that prompt and then use a prompt to generate also evaluation data sets and and you know because of that you know did you evaluate also your first prompt that generates evaluation and did you know all of that so bootstrapping normally the process of bootstrapping is you start from something you just basically assume something you just say like okay i'm going to manually verify and i'm going to assume this is correct this there is no error here it doesn't mean that's correct, but you assume that. In the future, you can improve it. But then on top of that, you build, and then you build. So bootstrapping means you build on top of something you verify. And at first, you will basically, the, the very first thing you have is your intelligence. So that means the manual verification. And you can assume that, for example, and then build on top. So if, you, if your understanding of prompt means, you know, not just one thing, but anything that you interact with, then it gets easier. So then naming it everywhere it comes, but it's everything, uh, you know, your goal, the goal that you're generating is a prompt for the client. But to do that, you have to write many prompts yourself to achieve that. And you have to, val you know, so that's the part. So it's a very, like in a coding sense, it's self-calling, right? You're self-calling a lot. So to generate, something you self call you the same function and um, because yeah so that's the confusion part and get the hang of it like um, by talking to a friend or by thinking it through um just get the hang of it okay um so better him you had a question earlier before you like when i joined so maybe you can also ask now if if your question is not answered um, but before that, Japes. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So my question is on the form, automatic form generation part. So uh, what I understand is that uh, we use the virtual database for the external data. One is for the RAG part. Uh, and also uh, now we have to use another vector database that is for a good font. So we uh, but why 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 another why it's just an, a schema different just within the same vector database you can put all of your it's a schema 
it's just in one schema let's say prompts in the prompts schema you define you know you you put all of your 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 prompts and then in another schema that's called i don't know like uh, legal documents you add all legal documents so it's the same vector database with a different schema so uh, when uh, in the same uh, database with different schema then there is a question or the user for the user based on the user input uh, before for that system we uh, change that to vector and uh, find the right uh, documents from the database then you select and now we also have to select the good comps that are similar to the question uh, yeah. So that the question could be more, uh, uh, maybe I don't know what the right term is, but more uh, fashion to uh, the right way so that the uh, evidence could be the right answer. Sorry, uh, so I, I, I missed. So, uh, so you select, uh, you select the context. So you select the context, you select, but the thing is, you see, like that it's there, that's slightly, that's a design principle. But do you, like like for example like it's it's the the main issue of course this is your first time so that's why maybe it's a bit confusing but you know a person only you you're the product you're building it's helping users to sell you know to get for example to get a good prompt and the rag part in in your case are the internal thing that you use so you're using rag to in part to build um like to build your own even like your product right so so the, i think the the key is that there is a rag just you're using to for example to just generate a, a, a candidate prompts like it's a, in itself is a rag right because there is a database uh, of prompts and a user gives you some intention and for that intention you try to use you know you try to select um a prompt and if you are uh, once the retrieval component but then if you want to modify that prompt to suit a certain user you can also generate so that means you give it this this is a good example and generate for me something that addresses this particular problem. And so that you, in this case, RAG is to just generate a good prompt or candidate prompt, let's say. And then the other part is like, of course, RAG, the first the person uses to, to do. So for example, in, in my case, what I am uh, like, so you would use, the evaluation data sets to get to the evaluation data sets, you can use another rag that has just basically that creates on top of ragas that creates evaluation data for you. So that once you have a candidate prompt, you can you can you know you can evaluate against. So that means you can use that data evaluation data sets to um, to get basically the strengths and weakness of the the, the generated candidate um, prompts. So, so is that clear? It's just because that's what's confusing a lot of people. Like RAG is just where you can use it is different. The user can then after you give it the the good prompt, the user then uses another RAG service, uh, their own RAG maybe to do uh, to do that. So that means to pull data accordingly and then uh, using your prompt, connecting them and then sending them to the LLM and get an answer so they don't come to you to get that answer they come to you to get a good prompt that they can use in their rag so and the prompt that they might they might ask you is even to just you know what prompt can i use to rephrase people's question you know that's an intention right they, they can say okay i have data i have context on this and this and that and I want a good drug to connect this data, this context, such that I get result on this. Give me a prompt. And you are, you know, so they have a rug in their mind, their own rug that they will do. And in that rug, they have a number of prompts that they might need. And they're asking you to give them those 
you know, best candidate uh, prompts for those. Is that uh, is that clear? Yeah, so we assume that there is existing rat in the time, and uh, the request is uh, the another rat system that generates a good prompt. Yeah, so your uh, service is, yeah, your service is more about generating prompts, ranking prompts, and then also a system to help them generate uh, again to help them like let's let's actually make it that one also you know uh, a prompt that provides generates good um, evaluation data sets so a good prompt so then in that sense let's the entire the three projects becomes the same the three tasks become the same thing like your service is about providing prompts that does in in one area just a generic prompt um, for a certain intention another for generating evaluation data sets and another um, for ranking uh, basically candidates so uh, and, and then you rank and provide um, like best candidates based on ranking so that means if they have already you know multiple prompts then you help them also rank Based on um, based on the evaluation data sets. Okay, but for this project, we don't uh, have an existing ad because when we line the first ad, we have to be specific for the data, yes, so that could uh, could be valid. So we need to build a rank for that also for this project for the client. Yeah, so the user. So you're, you're not, yeah, you're not like the client would would use your prompts on their rug. You're not building their rug, but you build your rug to basically provide, you know, to deliver good prompts. Uh, we don't need their rug for evaluation, so that we should know that using the right, uh, the prompt is right, using the correct one. I, I don't. I, I mean, your voice is slightly muffled, so it's very hard to to hear. Okay. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Now? Yeah, yeah, that's much better. I was. I, I think I was feeling so like the trying to listen was not. Yeah. So that this is much much easier. Go on. Okay. Okay. What I'm saying is that if we uh, we need to. Uh, evaluate our prompts if it's uh yes uh, check the answer right so that we could really know that it's it's correct yeah. for example you mentioned manually checking so one of one of the thing is uh, checking the, the answer that already we know and giving it and uh, see the answer so in order to do that don't we have to have the uh, clients rug no the you that's you know that's the strategy right you don't need to you basically saying like for factual things you know if you collect enough you, you have enough data that you generated evaluation data sets for you know um for factual things you you verify your system works certain percentage and that's fine so you don't need to have i mean it's it's basically a, almost always we address a class of problems so that means you you develop your strategy based on of course you invented certain data sets you know you use you try it on different data sets and then you validate it against so the entire system and then when you say let you say like yeah my system works you know on factual data for example this percentage my system the 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 prompts that i'm generating are accurate or provide you like i don't know uh 50 percent more uh part or they are economical or this or that because you have validated them on a collection of data sets like you tested them against so you don't need the client's particular one but the client's problem falls under part of the the things you tested right so for example if the the client is using it for generating music lyric and if you haven't tested it against that, that's then you can't advertise it, right? But if you have tested it on on other elements, then you can say like, yeah, like your prompts generated have advantage 
um, like that. So in a way, you don't need the client's particular data. So we, we test it on general uh, kind of knowledge. Exactly. Okay. So that's why last time I said you can just use it even on just a challenge document that you have as part of, um, you know, simply that. But so in a way, you can use multiple data sets to test. It's like, you know, how, how well you are performing your overall system, your overall prompt generate the prompts that generate how, you know, how best are they performing against, let's say, non-optimized systems. If you were just to write simple um, prompts without optimization, you know, how well they work, like, you know, how much they are better, the one that's optimized, how much it's better. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Michael. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I have two questions. Uh, the first question is if if you are trying to generate a general prompt, why do we need drag? I, I thought drag was training the LLM with specific data today for yeah. specific so data is. Just to answer for that, yeah. So your specific data in this case is, for example, the candidate, you know, prompts that you select from. You know, how do you know what are good examples for that particular problem? So you give it example. Yeah, these are good examples. For example, in this space, uh, prompts, and the user is wanting to use it on this. So give me. So you see, the rag basically means it's just you you use it to generate. So I, I don't know where the so. The actual you the retrieval part means you now fetch examples prompts from your prompts database example prompts that that are that are considered good that's your data now that's the context then you send it to the LLM and the LLM looks at that you know the type of prompts that are considered good and then generates a prompt based on that. Um, some candidates. So, if if you want if you want rag if you want to use rag, like because the only thing is that if you could select one from the selection, if it's if you select only one, then it's fine, right? Like that you don't need rag in that sense. But normally, for uh, you know the database that you have might not really address all cases. So, but you have similar cases like, for example, there are. In your database, there are good prompts for uh, writing email, um, and there are another good prompt for talking to a customer. And now you have uh, a user wanting to negotiate with the email, like they want to write a negotiation email. See now, it's it's not really the prompts that you have are not exactly exactly there, but because of what is a good email, what is like that that is consider and now the you know the LLM can generate for you so just use rag to generate prompt okay 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 so let me tell you my my understanding again maybe you yeah. can correct me so uh, I was working on I, I take I take the week seven document so yep. for example, if you take the week seven document, there is the week seven document, then we change it to the vector database. Mm -hmm. Then uh, after after embedding it, for example, let's say the user asks, like give me this week's deliverables. So yep. if you wanna get the deliverables, the with using similarity search and other certain mechanisms, it will take from the vector database and get us a, a vector which has only deliverables, right? No. Like, how did you chunk it? And it depends on how you, you stored it. Because yeah, in a vector yeah. database, if you put all the, the document, you just get that document. So how, right. did you how did you chunk it matters. Now, if you chunk it on something, then you get both the deliverables and other things. So yeah, okay. vector, so let's vector say... Does it only gives you chunks. Yeah, okay, but let's say with similarity search or other mechanisms, we get the deliverable, the deliverable no, we, chunks. 
Yes, so. chunks that are uh, chunks that contain some something about deliverables. Yeah. So after that, uh, from from that vector, we will get our prompt or questions or answers, right? No. It's like so, then you send it normally in a rag sense. Then you send. So those are contexts. They are called context. Now you send it to the LLA to say, okay, here are some context about the document that I'm asking, and a person wants deliverables. Can you give me deliverable? And then the LLM from that con if the actually the context contains the the real deliverables, not a mistaken one, then they give you it gives you uh, yeah the deliverables written in a certain way. Now, but you use prompt to to ask to the LLM you know, to synthesize deliverables in a certain way. But you must write that one, the prompt. So, you know, who's writing that prompt to synthesize deliverables in a certain format? It's you. So the automatic prompt, if you have automatic prompt, but you actually generated that one from automatic prompt generation, you know, directly just yeah, from the intention, the user intention. The user intention is to, you know, the user intention in this case is to get really good deliverables uh, on, you know, from challenge documents. And for that, it synthesized a prompt for you. And now after getting the chunks, you use that prompt and the chunks and ask it to the LLM and the LLM provides the answer. And what we are saying is that, can you test, you know, how accurate, what are the good prompts that one. So that's the separate. We take that part of writing the prompt as a separate product. And that's what we call it automatic prompt generation. Is that clear? So, uh, like yeah, yeah. So so we get the deliverable. So basically, we are telling the LLM, here is the document. So from that document, get us the prompt, right? No, you're not. Like, you're asking, what, you know, when you say just the one you say it is the prompt. When you say like, we are asking the LLM, how do you ask the LLM? So what you got from the retrieval part is one, just context, just some kind of, you know, some contexts, some chunks. And then what connects bit from there to the answer is a prompt. And who writes that prompt? Okay, now I'm I am maybe you can if you if you explain it in graphical meter by drawing or something, I will appreciate it. Yeah, it's uh let's just um, here mm. So I think you get the jump board, right? It says success tonight. Okay, I'm gonna share. So if you use, I think this one should be fine. So what about now? Okay, so then I'm gonna use So no, so normally, um, uh, 
So we take this one, apply to this. Okay. So No, I don't. Okay, so I think I, I was trying to use something else. It doesn't work. So, so, like, just always just blocks are. I mean, I think the easiest is maybe to just instead of this to use actually uh, a rug diagram now and it's easier just that one so can you see my screen yes yeah, so that basically the, I mean, in, in a way that anytime you talk to an LLM, there's just a prompt. And this context is basically what you get from retrieval component. So sorry, basically what you, yeah. Sorry, we don't see your screen if we are sharing it. Ah, okay. Maybe then if I do what about here. If I bring it on the jump board, can you see? So does any is everyone seeing the jump board? Or let me share my screen. So okay, so. So you see my screen now? Yes, we do. Okay. So so every time, every time, so as a, so the client in this case comes, they have intention. The goal they have is that they have data. And the then they want they want to ask, like they are providing, for example, in a company, they want from that data certain things to be answered. Right. So what they have is the data and what they want is the outputs and the output they want it to be in a certain way. Their intention is maybe just from the data that they want accurate, only very short answers, very brief answers that really contains high quality um, information. Right. Or sometimes they want it to be funny, like they want to have they want to present the output in a funny way. Uh, and this and that. So that's their intention. And they have data that they want to use. Now, normally, the ARG process means is like when a person asks, that is translated into vector. And then from that, that you get, you know, because in the data, that you have entered it into smaller parts. And then based on the equation, you extract uh, some chunks, right? And so, so this part is basically just what is what you are extracting the retrieval component right then this part is the argumentation so this part so so the a part right but it is this part that it's first it requires the like 
pumped because you're trying to combine something, in, in, trying to infuse. And then, of course, this part is the generation, right? Right? So this is a very simple process, but the A part, they don't know, you know, all they have is the intention, but they don't know this element, the missing element. So this part is what we call like automatic. automatic prompt generation right so based on and the input for this is so the inputs for this are um intention right just the intentions automatic prompt generation and then you go into but in the process of automatic generation you also have other uh, other elements like uh, it's just uh, so here i can change the color okay okay so so in this one you have uh Um, as well as okay. so it also includes incorporates for that process you might need to rank based on evaluation data sets and then of course for that there is another input itself right uh, what you generate earlier right that's like you know so so each of them to to build this and to get there to have thing you need to had you you already needed evaluation data sets that means to generate automatically something like that and like that so this part is what the user wants and this part is what you are providing and this part is dependent on the user's intentions like it's not just the same as the question that you know their client asked but just what they want to give to their client so that that this intention is very different from this um the um, So by their clients right so this output is influenced by that and this is there in this output you're not providing this output it is you're designing this and this is influenced by this and how this output is influenced by that and this is basically their intentions 
are what they first uh, basically like by this, right? So they are, their intention means this one. Like they give you their intentions, which influences the output. Okay, so is that clear, Michael? No? Yeah, it's much more clear, thank you. Okay. And does anyone, is it clear for everyone too? Okay, great. Wonderful. Okay, so one last maybe question, if there are, then uh, I know we're of, uh, way over time. But, you know, th this is good. I mean, the reason why I'm free discussion like this is useful. Yeah, this is not e easy, but this is the most that you will, you know, that the more you understand it here now, the more it gets easier as you go on because you're going to do again and again similar things. So, um, yeah, so I, I enjoy, I'm enjoying the discussion. I hope you are enjoying the discussion and it's not only enjoying, but you're also learning, kind of understanding it and helping you do more today and next days. Okay, Hilary. Uh, my question is, could you, could you clarify how to come up with the evaluation tests? Uh, because uh, when I saw with Ragas, these are ground truths and, uh, if you're going to use that to evaluate faithfulness does not uh does not need ground truth the others need ground truths that way you're going to define it kind of um like uh, uh manually because uh yeah so, unless you're going to generate like, the ground truth yes you are generating ground truths so when i say question and answer it meant the answer is the ground truth so you generate the ground truth using LLMs, uh, okay. given the data. Yeah, okay. for example, uh -huh. for example, like you can say, you know, you give it the challenge document. Again, some of the things, if you, you know, because we're using a small data, sometimes it doesn't make, so, you know, the, the problems where we are giving you sometimes the toy problems m might be harder to really uh, show the, the complexity, but the ground truths, um, for certain things can be accessible, like someone can give you, but sometimes you're just generating it, for example, okay, saying you from the whole document instead of just a chunk document, you can generate evaluation data set that says, you know, now there isn't a problem with respect to like data missing, but the LLM generates around tasks and around programs and around these things, ground truth. It asks, it's kind of a question, and then it gives a ground truth for that, and it's good at it. Yeah, here I record. So I mean, like when you, um, so le let's say uh, the other day you were were being taken through with uh, example of a llama being asked on G three five so three point five. So he doesn't understand what llama is, so you have to give it the context. And then when you give it the context, it can now get. Uh, bring us the answer with the context but that that one it is the answer so the ground truth if you say L, the llm is going to generate it i i mean it has to yeah, also to no. get from so, the context so which is the same thing as the answer yes so th there are two things so it's true you know uh in in one part if you know the answer is there is very different from if you don't know the answer is there right so the ground truth in in that case in this case is now the context like you are asking it things that the llm is good at right it's basically you are asking it and you are not asking it you you, you don't have uncertainty if the ground truth is there or not it is there and therefore you are asking it to synthesize you know some uh some task and or some question and then the ground truth for that and you define what how the ground truth should be. So that's how what Ragas generates or many other systems generate for you, um, like evaluation data sets. So the evaluation data sets incorporates tasks and qu answers, ground truths for that. And now you use just the, the, the question only and you use the prompt to, 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 to get, you know, but that prompt 
you don't give it of course if you give that prompt the whole entire document that you know that's different but in this case it is that that part is testing your whole pipeline right so it does it didn't have your chunk so you do all the the parts like like what i showed earlier like in the jump board so you do all the process um and there might be mistakes on the on on basically e extraction the retrieval component there might be mistake like because you didn't have enough data and you know things like that so yeah I, i'm not sure if that is clear so let me just um is that is that clear so the very first part is the llm has no uncertainty and it it is being asked about to to generate question and the ground truth from the input it's given the other one is the input it's given we are uncertain if it really contains everything and we are asking it to generate an answer not a ground truth an answer from that context but we're not sure of many things there now like the prompts should be for example the prompt should define and in the other one in the previous in the, in the evaluation data set generation you know it it because it has it because you are not influencing it you're not asking it to say you know uh, when is the war happens for example if it's a, a history something article or context you're not asking it when is the the you know the the year that the war was fought you you don't say that you just say whatever that can be synthesized a ground truth from it just generate but on this one when you give it as an actually to answer you give a context and say when is the war happening or when did the war happen the year that the war happened but the way that you then ask that thing through the prompt is what is being you know sometimes it may be confusing sometimes the selection was this and that so you're testing that but the very first part the, there isn't much uncertainty in a sense because the llm is generating from that um so and you ask it to in your prompt in your evaluation data set generation prompt you ask it to not really generate anything that is not in the context does that does that make sense yeah so uh sort of yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I think you look at the ragas pipe pipeline just in their prompts it's that's what it's doing in a way like they can generate ground truths for you and it's the reason they can generate is that it's slightly different from asking a question it's not a q and a it's you know basically from a given text split something and generate key you know some ask yourself and answer it answer it yourself that's the, what the prompt is telling it in the ground in the evaluation data set generation while on the actual like asking you are saying here is a context you know what then you ask something and the context may have may have that information inside the context or may not and how does it handle if it doesn't and and all that is being tested yeah okay Abu Bakr, did you have your hand or? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, what we, to my understanding, what we basically are doing is to uh, get a prompt to ask it with a prompt the LLM to get a, another prompt that is that better asks its its own data, right? Uh, on which case, sorry. So we um, have, uh, for example, we have the PDF. Uh, yeah on the history thing so uh, we give it a prompt so that it generates another prompt it generates in this case no so your your prompt so your prompt if it's evaluation data sets uh, to generate evaluation data sets your prompt is asking it to generate a certain type of question and then a ground truth for it so the the prompt just ends there it is not asking it to generate prompt but like in this case yeah just generate for me and raga simulates that like it, you you you, are, you you can give it data and generates uh, for you um evaluation data set by evaluation data set it means ground truth question and ground truth so ragas would uh, 
evaluate the equation in the ground truth, right? No, it generates. So if it's generating, I think like let's separate what is what are you doing. If your interest is generating ground like evaluation data set, that part is about Ragas has internally its own uh, prompt that it applies. So Ragas has implicitly a prompt. You can go and get that prompt if you want. Just inside there, just ultimately, the, it, it has a prompt. It uses in its pipeline to generate ground, like question and ground truths. OK. Good. So I hope it's clear. And if it's not clear, let's really ask and maybe just the uh, tutor team maybe just if there are questions you can ask me so that we can arrange maybe tomorrow as well but i want you to get to nail it on this one so that you know at least the terminologies the complexities are are clearer yeah go on Abu Bakr. so i had uh, some problems like uh, rate limiting so yeah. that's you mean rate limiting in in your API key yeah yeah, I mean, I think that's just uh, Fikrta, we can talk to her and how much are you, if it's a lot of consumption, and then there are also rate limits by the by OpenAI, but I unless you really are using a lot, it's usually harder to achieve and to reach there. But let's see what is the case. It's It could be just, uh, we have budgeted something. You know, it's very expensive, especially if you're using 4.0. Uh, or like you know if it's just gpt 3.5 then it's very easy so if you are experimenting you could use that um, but you're you're like if you're using the like some of them at and then you are using llm and not vectorization it's it gets expensive very quickly so maybe just that but um maybe the tutor team can help and to see what is the case but if if that is the case we can increase if, we can increase maybe the limits so i I think they will reach out to you. Um, the tutor team can organize that, and Fikrta is the one who's, as far as I know, dealing with that. Uh, yeah. I, I actually didn't use that much. It was just, I was using the previous API key. So uh, yeah, maybe the only the thing case. I. Yeah. Yeah, if that is the case, usually we delay, maybe we might delay. I don't know. So, in a way, like, uh, write it. I think they are quick on answering this, dealing the, with this. So just now they know, so they will get back to you. Yeah. Okay, Johannes. Uh, is there a way to know like how much we use, like to know for the limit? Um, I think it's like if you count the tokens, how much you know? Because almost always you can you know you can get your the tokens that you use you can calculate it yourself. But if uh, once in a while, you can also ask, uh, and she can give you, like, in a way that it's the number of tokens, if you determine them, if you just save them somewhere, or if you just, yeah, it's like you will be able to know. But in a way that we know it, because the in the dashboard, we know for each uh, API key, how many tokens people have used and how much in terms of they, they use. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even just that, it's a very simple, it's like if you tick token, and if you just calculate, tick, like Hillary says, the Langsmith, that's, but also if you just use tick token, is a Python package, and it's from OpenAI, and just before you send, you can um, count it. And then after, but actually, after, for every uh, API, for every API return, OpenAI gives you actually the usage in its like if it's completion and stuff. And for um tokenization, it's like the amount of its it's you know, you can go there. So it, you can always just get there are simple Python. I mean TikTok is the, the most used. So just you give it and then it tokenizes it and then it gives you it's a very simple package and then it gives you the number of token and then you can convert that one using the pricing calculator if you want to but in principle don't be like it's good to have an idea but as long as you are in reasonable format i think it should be fine as long as you are not like wasting it too much 
even if you you reach the limit it's good like i always say break the break the system don't be afraid to break something if you are given just use everything but make sure to use it for you know to get more value not just being lazy just send everything but more like to get value and if you are getting value if you break the system i i am happy it's like that that should be the case everywhere you go um it should not be about like caring about the other person i think do the best you can and and be mindful that means you're not wasting it but the rest you shouldn't bother that much okay great i think that's way over time thanks guys bye in academic team i'm sorry for